Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Psalm 19, verses 1 through 6. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit is to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. In this psalm, David begins by declaring the glory of God that is just obvious if you have half of an awareness of the world around you. I don't know how people can look at this world. It's incredible beauty and diversity and gorgeousness. And look at the universe in all of its vastness and imagine <laughs> somehow that all of this came into being by accident. David says that you can see it in the sky, you can see it in the night sky, you can see it everywhere you look. There is such intricacy and such incredible design. You're probably aware of the uh, idea, the concept that this earth is almost precisely fine-tuned for sustaining life. There are about two dozen different variables of physics and chemistry and biology that if they were in the least bit different at all, we could not have life on Earth. If we were a fraction farther away from the sun or a fraction closer, if the Earth's axis was tilted slightly different, if the composition of the air and the water were slightly different. There are all these variables, and it is so painfully obvious that this could not have happened entirely by accident. You know, one of the things that I enjoy doing in the summer in particular is to just observe, and you can see it in the background behind me, observe how many different shades of green there are. Now, I know a lot of that has to do with light and shadow and whatnot, but let me ask you this, whether it's green or red or blue or any other color, which all have multiple variations, why should this world have anything other than gray or black and white? It is purely because God delights in these things and has created a world for us so that we might delight in it. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. You can't look anywhere in this world without being stunned by the incredible beauty and diversity and complexity of life on earth. And David is pointing out what everyone knows, that the world itself, its creation and the beauty of it speaks to the existence of God. Yeah, I believe it takes a lot more faith, if you want to call it that, to believe that there is no God than to believe that there's some kind of God. And what we have to understand though, is that this revelation from nature, it's been often called the book of nature that everybody gets to read. This book of nature speaks to a creator. And yet, unfortunately, throughout history, mankind has often ended up worshiping nature. And Paul speaks clearly about this in the first chapter of Romans. He says, what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. His invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. And he's speaking about people that do not acknowledge God. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, 
God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Observing creation ought to make us fall to our knees and in worship of the creator. And when we settle for worshiping something that is made rather than something, rather than the one who made it, then we're in for deep trouble. You know, David goes on in this psalm to speak about the sun that rises like a bridegroom coming out of his tent every morning and running across the heavens. It's a powerful image uh, and it's poetic and it is just a beautiful concept that David puts before us. But what it ought to tell us as well is that the sun is nothing to be worshiped. The sun plays its role because it has been assigned that role by God. All of the other nations that surrounded Israel in the early days worshiped the sun and the moon and the stars and alone among the peoples of that era, the people of Israel understood that those were created things and they were not to be worshiped. And to do so is to worship an idol. There's been a rise over the last few years in nature worship and in elements of I don't know what you want to call it, but people who are just in love with the creation. And make no mistake, God gave us this creation to take care of it, not to abuse it. We are to tend it and to nurture it and to make it flourish and to protect it. We're also to use it for our benefit because we are the crown of creation and God expects us to take full advantage of what is right and proper. We are not to worship creation. It has been put here to serve us, but we are to utilize this creation in a way that honors the God who made it. So as you look at the world today, take a minute to observe the glory of God just in the created things that are around you. And remember that you, as one who is made in the image of God, are the crown of God's creation. And he built all of this for you. This is where we live, and this place has been given to us by our Heavenly Father, and we look forward to the day when heaven and earth will once again be reunited as they were in the Garden of Eden, when our Savior returns and everything is put back the way it is supposed to be. But for now, we can catch a glimpse of that on these days when we can enjoy the beauty of God's creation and give all the glory to Him. God's blessings be upon you this day.